this bad. Got the truck over at Pops' shop where he has some nice heat and insulation. Got the motor out, started inspecting things. And it did not just bend the rod. And broke the piston. Yeah. I wonder if we can pry this thing yeah, out of here. Yeah. yeah. She did a number. I think what happened is that like you were saying, it bent the rod and then it just hit so much that it snapped. connected huh have to get a light down there it doesn't feel that stupid <clears throat> no the rod almost looks fine yeah, it just broke the top of the piston. Wow. Huh. Hard to tell, but I think the rod still looks straight. That's a new one. I'm gonna pull this head off and see if that back piston, because both back uh, intake runners were pretty wet on the heads. So I kind of wonder if maybe this one um, flooded, bent that one, and then it contacted that piston maybe. I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> Alright, got this one all unbolted. Whoa! This one was full of gas too. This one's moving. Let's see if it goes to TDC. Yeah, it's up there. Probably a chunk of piston got clogged up there. Yeah. Just to that one spot. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Right On this side of the crank? Oh, yep. Yeah. On the back. Yeah. Huh. Well, it was obvious that uh, this cylinder flooded, the injector stuck open, because that's all gas right there. Yeah. Just pouring it. But why did it break that one? It seems like it would have fucked up this one then. I mean, it was running. That's weird. Gosh dang LS junk. 
This wouldn't happen if this is a small block. Yeah, right. <laughs> Alright, so here is the 6 that came out of it. Uh, I already showed you guys the piston and everything. There's the piston, what's left of it. Here's everything else. Wrist pin, totally fine. The rod, for the most part, oh, it's hard to tell about the base. But it doesn't rock at all and it sits flat on the table. base <laughs> I don't know I I think that there could be a little something there but I think for the most part the rods fine I'd never reuse it again but I think the piston took the brunt of the impact piston took a shit yeah uh, anyway we ended up stealing the 5.3 out of the Mustang putting the cam and springs in this which the, the springs seemed totally fine uh, no issues with those. So we got this thing all back together. Just finished plugging up the harness and swapping the injectors with some spare ones that came out of his truck. And we're about to try to roll it over, see if it does anything. Come on, baby. Might have put a battery charger on it. Yeah. All right, people, we're going to give you a pause for the cause for a second as soon as I figure out the camera. What do you do? Just shut it off? It's alive! What? It's alive! Oh yeah. It's smoky as shit. Holy yeah. fuck. God damn, where are the catalytic converters? Alright, yeah, yeah, aside from tightening that again. Yeah, aside from that exhaust leak, <laughs> the motor sounds way happier. It sounds a lot more like a, a motor. Less like someone trying to come into your house. Yeah. Yeah, so lucky us, this exhaust flange looked like uh, uh, what's something really curved. The exhaust flange was just so warped that uh, you could have this side tightened down. Like five of the bolts in, the back one's still quarter inch off. So uh, that's been a fun thing to deal with. This throttle is hanging up a little bit. Not sure why that's different. Uh, and you can see we did change the intake from the one that had that big hole in it. That's another intake that was just laying around. Actually in our scrap trailer, we've got three more of those intakes just sitting in there. We've got one here, uh, one at the back and one under this inner fender. Oh, your uh, charger started to take off with it. <laughs> so I don't know how this is going to impact the budget just yet. I know how I think it should impact it, but I know that some people are probably going to be upset about that. Um, to me, we're building this for the cost of what it would cost to build it, you know? 
So, I don't know. We'll go over that another time. Right now, we just want this truck together. What is going on with this bumper? I'm sure they've cooled off a bunch by now. Yeah. Huh. Oh, there's red dot, I was wondering. Maybe so. Temperatures are all over the place. I mean, it's definitely hot though on them. You can see we found the vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator. So basically, just uh, toss some coolant in it, do a lot more tuning. HP tuners is always fun. And then whenever we get a dry day, we could do a little bit of testing with it. All right, the S10 runs. We're back in business. Sounded a lot better. You could hear the exhaust leak where I was talking about the um, header flange leaking. I wish I had taken a picture of it when it, we had it just like sitting up against the head because it's one of the worst ones I've ever seen. Like we got it to where it kind of clamped against the head, but it still sounds like it's leaking. And it probably already blew the gasket out, so that's probably what it is. Might have to like double up on some gaskets for it. But the truck is running and we're, as soon as the weather kind of cooperates a little bit and I can tune the thing a little bit more, which man, Holly has really spoiled me. <laughs> like going from HP tuners to Holly, the Holly feels amazing. It feels like the Starship Enterprise or something. But then you go from Holly to HP tuners and it's just like, this is so much more effort. <laughs> it sucks. Um, <clears throat> but I'm hoping that I can kind of cheat the system a little bit and find one of my old naturally aspirated tunes from Goldie Hawn because uh, that engine was really similar. Same intake, similar, slightly smaller cam, um, headers, things like that. So uh, I'm hoping I can find one of those old tunes and just kind of tweak it a little bit. Um, and it was running rough, the S10, because I really phoned it in on the tune because we went from a 6.0 to um, a 5.3. So I just like put in the 5.3 displacement and then kind of scaled the VE table to, like I said, it was real low effort because I've been sick as heck the past week. Um, but I'm starting to feel more alive, so we're getting there. So by all non-scientific measurements, the rod is still straight, like putting it on the table, like a very, very flat table. Um, there is a chance it's bent just from getting beat up. Like I said, I don't think it should ever be reused again. Um, but it's not obvious that the rod is what failed, which is kind of the thing I'm trying to get at. But the marks on the piston, it looks like what happened, there's a couple marks from a bolt in the piston. And everywhere where there's damage, it's not from a valve. And the valves look totally untouched too. It's just the top of the piston and the surface of the dome, uh, the chamber of the cylinder head. So I'm pretty sure that a bolt just fell in the intake runner and that's what went through the motor. So that's kind of a bummer that a good 6.0 got trashed. Actually, it would have had to have been here. Oh, I bet I know what happened. I bet I know what happened now that I'm thinking about it. Because one, I forgot that I had the heads off here. So I would have noticed it then, but when I was hitting the firewall in, not the firewall, the trans tunnel, I 
bet that a bolt from up on the uh, tray fell down into it. That had to be what happened. That sucks. I mean, at least, at least now I'm pretty sure it was my fault and not anyone else's, so that feels good, but also feels bad. Kind of a weird catch-22. <laughs> Uh, and then as far as the budget goes, I think what I'm going to do is what a few people suggested to me uh, at the beginning was uh, wait until the truck is done and finished and running and then go over the cost of everything to build it the way it is there. And I think that's a pretty good idea. So that way we stay true to the budget and it allows for fuck ups and mistakes to not kind of ruin the life of the truck. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with that. I know that it's not super real worldy, but I think it's also the most fair way to do a, uh, a build like this. And I think that's how Matt kind of did the eight for eights car too. Cause I know he had like four or five different motors in that. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But that is going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. The S10 is alive and running again and hopefully soon to be making some passes. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you need any merch, first link in the description below. If you need anything from Snake Eater Performance, use code SnyderTron for 10% off your order. If you need anything from Shitbox Supply, use code SnyderTron for 5% off your order. And I will see you guys in the next one.